Um, I'm Debbie. I'm the creator of Deborah Co Coaching. And today I have with me my esteemed guest and client, Bernie. Um, well, I'm 49 years old. Um, I'm married. I have two kids. Uh, my son and I have a son 15 years old and my daughter who just turned 14. And um, I'm what else do you want to know? <laughs> okay. Um, what do you do for a profession? I know you do a yeah. couple of things. And... I'm a licensed clinical social worker. Um, I have, I work uh, with a nephrology group. Um, and I also have my own private practice. Um, and just trying to make a difference in this world. Uh, you see, this is why I love Bernie. So Bernie started in our program. Um, what year was that, Bernie? Uh, 2017. Okay, so 2017, both of our lives were about ready to get changed. Um, Bernie, you can see from her infectious smile, she came in as bold as that smile. Um, and I knew that she was, um, you know, a little different. And <laughs> I was attracted to that. <laughs> so, look... We're going, we're going to post this today and allow people to hear, you know, this conversation that we're having. So why don't we start with what was like life for Bernie before or pre-2017 and working with the program? Oh, before 2017, it was, um, I describe it today when people ask me that is, I was, I feel like, if I look at it today, I feel like if I was just checking off boxes. Um, I was just going through life, um, you know, when just going through life, just trying to maintain when um, I had gained um, a bunch of amount of weight. I was over 100 pounds overweight and just trying to live life, just trying to keep up with life. And um, um, I was I was not happy at all. I, and I just didn't realize how unhappy I was uh, because I was so in my stuff just to survive. Um, I didn't realize it until um, it was until the until medically I had to get involved with uh, getting control of my weight loss. Mm -hmm. um, and so, what was that big push that caused you to say, "Time out, reevaluate, reset"? Yeah, absolutely. My um, my big push was um, there was um, my son was born in fifth grade, and when my father passed away. He was 49 when he passed away of a major heart attack, and my and I was in fifth grade, so there was a lot of um, projections that was coming out because at that time I was also seeing a cardiologist, um, and I was at 49. I was actually younger than my father, um, so and um, so I didn't want to go see uh, the cardiologist. I was I was just in the in denial. Uh, about a lot of things, and um, and it wasn't a towel. Um, to me, I call it God intervening for me, uh, where where things just came where I had to go. I I literally had I was on the I I've never had an EKG on me, and my primary care doctor um, had rushed in an EKG in the office at that time, and she says, "No, you need to go." Um, so that's that's where it all started. Is um, um, I was led to uh, my cardiologist um, and working with them, and I've been working with them, uh, which led me to um, to a sleep doctor because uh, I was diagnosed with the um, um, had to get a CPAP, a sleep dis disorder, and um, so I had to incorporate all the different systems in order for me to my body to be functional enough and mentally enough to go ahead and start this journey of weight loss. Um, I need mm -hmm. to get to a better place. I, I can visually, I, re, I remember seeing the person I was back in 2017 and visually seeing the person that I am today, um, the athlete that I am today, the healthier person that I am today, not only, um, not only about the food, but just mentally and my energy, um, mm -hmm. just kind of my own personal energy, um, healthier today than I was back then. And mm -hmm. And I can visually see that back then where I wanted to go. And I just didn't know how to get there. It's like, it's like this fog. Um, yeah. 
this fog in between that I can see the bridge, but it got lost in the fog, but I can actually see the person on the other side. Mm -hmm. um, so I knew where I wanted to go. I just need to help getting there. Um, and mm -hmm. that's, where, um, and in my profession and in the mental health profession, being a therapist, um, I've actually had to be able to allow someone to come in and help me get to that part, to go through the journey with me. And that's where mm -hmm. you came in. Mm -hmm. So do you remember the first day that we, our connection was made? I remember the first date the way that I remember it. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't meet Debbie. Um, it was uh, actually, uh, at that time, was Coach Bree. And uh -huh. I met her for the first time. And that was at what we call Blackstone. Uh -huh. um, and she was my first coach. Just for uh, everybody, that, that's, that was one of our locations. So like pre-pandemic, pre pre-everything, that was a location. So. And uh, they would talk about Debbie. I heard her name and I just thought, okay, well, I just must be another person. Um, so it wasn't until I was in Blackstone where we were getting ready to do one of our uh, trainings. And this woman just comes by me and taps me on the wrist. And she says, I got my eyes on you. And I'm like, well, who in the heck is this lady? Because <laughs> I didn't know who she was. And it turned out to be you. Um, and that's how I met you. And then, um, and then the second time that I uh, met you was when another one of our coaches was informing us that you do training for the California Classic. But see, for California Classic for me is such a big race for me in my journey because I would always um, back out. I always wanted to ride my bike across, you know, the freeway. That's awesome. Like, that's so cool. Um, I always wanted to ride my bike. So when I heard that uh, you did training, um, I was anticipating I was going to go training for bike riding. And, um, and I actually met you at Starbucks and we're there and you let me know that I was gonna do uh, my first 5K and I didn't believe you, <laughs> and uh, which I did, uh, which was running. That day. Walking. That day, I went out there. That day. <laughs> Had another yeah. fight, I didn't know what 5K was. I thought it was about $5,000 or something, but. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I do remember that day, Bernie showed up and just to give people a reference, you know, I don't like to use that number on a scale, but I think to help women understand, um, can you, would you mind sharing the number on the scale, your, your before number? Yeah. Yeah. My before number was 271. Is okay. that and how tall are you? By one. Mm -hmm. So just to give people that perspective of what situation you were facing, and then you show up to our community run club and um, I asked you what your goal was and you said to run a 5k and I said well it's your lucky day that's going to happen today and we went out and you did it and I knew instantly see a lot of people would have said oh I can't do that or what are you talking about now trust me she probably had nasty thoughts in her mind about me <laughs> but that's okay she faced that fear and she, you know, she did the rise up thing and she conquered that. She didn't ask me any questions. Like there just was no discussion about it. She just stood up. Okay. What do we do? And I don't even remember what happened after that, but I remember thinking when I got back to Starbucks, has anybody seen that lady? Like, where did Bernie go? Has anyone seen Bernie? Um, because I was prepared to go out and get you. And then there you were, you know, and to give people another perspective. So 270 pounds on someone that's five one, there should have been a lot of fear, you know, mm -hmm. and I didn't care how fast you could have walked it. You could have, but I knew you wanted to run. So we set you up, I think on 30, 30 intervals. Mm -hmm. Um, but just the fear of facing that unknown, something you hadn't done. And just doing it, and I knew right then, I said, this gal, she can get what she wants. I, I knew it. I, I knew she can get what she wants. Um, and she showed up in her jeans. That was her new pair of running shorts. 
<laughs> and it was just fantastic. It was just a beautiful day. And I knew then. Now, now go forward, and she's lost over 125 pounds. Um, she's been through the tears. We've been through the frustrations. We've been through the, um, you know, just the ups and downs and the joys. And today, she, you heard her speak of herself as an athlete. And so tell us about like your weekly routine. What, what do you participate in and what are some of those athletic things? Yeah, um, I'm always about our community. I love our community. I love the coaching. Um, so that's part of my routine. So I start off on, a, if we look at on Saturday, start Saturday. Saturday's our run club. Um, and we go out there and we run um, it maybe three miles, maybe six. Or walk. We have a lot of walkers. Yeah, and walk. We, we, there are walkers there. Um, for, my, for myself, it would either be intervals or if I feel like running that day, there's times when I get to a point where um, I've identified uh, my athletic uh, runner that there's times where she just wants to, you know, this is run. We're just going to run today. Don't care what I do. I don't want to look at my watch. I just want to run. Um, so that's what I do. I just allow my body to feel that and allow her to come out and just go. Um, but, and then we, um, then after Saturdays and, um, Sundays, usually a rest day. And then I have Monday, I do my weightlifting in the morning. Um, so I have 30 minutes of training, strength training, um, and then off to work. And then on Tuesdays I run, um, Wednesday I do my strength training, uh, Tuesday evening is actually go back to Tuesday evening. We have a Goscue. Um, so I usually pick that up and I'll do, do the recordings because usually when, the Agoscu who's live is going on. I'm usually either driving my son somewhere. So I'll make time to do it after I get home. So I'll do the recordings. Mm -hmm. And um, and then Wednesday back to weight training and then Thursday back to running. And then Friday is yoga, which is nice because I love the meditation. And then Saturday back to run club. And nice. so, yeah, so there's, I have one rest day that I will give myself and then I'm, in between, the one thing that I was letting coach know is, or letting you know that, the one thing I love about the recordings is because they are recorded. So I can go back and stop and then do the um, do the form because there's sometimes I might not be doing the form that I think I'm doing, but then I need to stop and just pause it for a little bit and really see where your body's at to kind of see how my body is working. And if it's not working, the way that you're describing it, then that tells me I've got an issue. So then right. I'll bring it. Um, and just to give kudos to Bernie, she has now become a certified trainer um, through our program. She has become a certified kickboxing trainer um, with an independent organization that certifies kickboxers. Um, and she has just really turned her uh, athleticism into something and we're very proud of her and she actually helps coach some of our women um, to, through their journey so we're very proud of Bernie congrats now before we leave could you just touch on maybe why our food program is a little bit different kind of where we start and then um, a little bit about some of the like we we do some we call it loosely brain training right our brain busters and so a little bit about the food, maybe why it was a little different for you, and then the brain, and then we'll wrap it up. Yeah, for for me about the food, um, the way that I was eating before was what I was used to, um, because it, it got me to a point where I was unhealthy, so it wasn't the best types of food I was eating. Um, so being in the program has allowed me to really learn about my microbiome, really learn about my ecosystem, really learn about um, my gut, you know, and the foods, the types of foods um, that we, that we choose to eat is, is it, is it helping my gut or is it not? And I never heard about gut detox before. I mean, I've heard about gut detox, but I've never knew exactly what it was until um, I started working in our program. And uh, to do a gut detox and then looking at our uh, seven allergen foods and taking those out, because um, one of them is eggs. Like I, I love eggs and I'm 
it never been an allergy food. I, at least I never thought it was until I actually did the gut detox and I actually had to switch my eggs around. I just couldn't just go buy regular eggs. They actually be, had to be organic because those were, those worked better for me. Um, I would have never have known that. I thought eggs were eggs, but it's, it's not the case. Um, so that has been a huge takeaway for me is learning about my, my gut, um, what healthy eating is, um, and learning how the food that we put into our body actually fuels our performance the next day or the next, or for training for a race. Um, the food that we choose to put in our body is what's gonna help us get the outcomes of our races. And I didn't put those two together because intellectually, we're all intellectual individuals and we can say, yeah, we eat broccoli and we eat chicken and that's no big deal, but it's deeper than that. It, it's, it goes beyond that because intellectually we get it, but there is a different layer of understanding of those foods with our body and our performance that is just heightened in our program. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and, um, and then our mindset shifts. Oh, our mindset. Yes. Our mindset. And that's in, in, in my, uh, in my profession. Um, I love, love, love working with individuals and switching their thought processes around and switching them, um, their their vision about themselves their journey and how that corresponds to their ability to live a healthy life um so being able to be in it be in brain, brain brain busters um and being around other individuals who are struggling um let me change that word not struggling who are overcoming um you know those obstacles and being able to live a healthier lifestyle it's it's so empowering uh, because you know that other individuals are um, are there supporting each other through this journey. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, with Brain Busters, we're able to tackle in the negative thought processes. We're able to tackle in, um, you know, to uh, focusing on, you know, how we're feeling um, with our workouts, you know, if our workouts are going to be performed properly or not. Um, has a lot to do with how we feel about ourselves. Yeah. That's good. And you know, another thing I want to give you kudos for, um, you know, I, I publicly, you know, tell people that I have two or three coaches in my life. Mm -hmm. um, I am not so bound up in my own ego that I don't recognize the value of having someone coach me through those obstacles that I'm facing that are keeping me from what I want to do because often we all have those like in a car we might have a blind spot that we can't see and we kind of all have that with our own self-awareness so mm -hmm. you coming from you know a mental health care clinician just recognizing that you could be in a community that might help you with that self-awareness and not getting stuck in your own junk to say no I can do it I can fix it I love to run and I have a run coach and I have a business coach and I've used many mentors through my nutritional journey. Um, and so kudos to you for that and helping our women see, I don't know why, but it seems like women will get a coach for a kid. Um, the, the male athletes, well, even the young female athletes, they recognize the idea of a coach. You know, they all have several coaches. But mm -hmm. for some reason, those of us that are just kind of, you know, everyday folk, we, I don't know, we don't give enough value to the fact that a coach can help you get through that obstacle. And yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. That's one thing that in my profession that we know is that we need someone there. You know, yeah. We, we, we don't see our own stuff. We, yeah. We just, so. yeah. And yeah. it's okay to say we need help. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. 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 I, yeah, right. Um, yeah, so that's good stuff, Bernie. You are an amazing athlete. You're an amazing trainer. You are amazing in your practice. I know that you just love doing what you do and you have a passion for wanting to help impact, help and, and impact women and men and boys and kids and all that. Um, I wanna thank you. I, I mean, God knew that we needed to be together right and yeah. it's and and sometimes it's a struggle we don't want to let people you know 
training, coaching people sometimes creates that we're not in that struggle, but it creates that. And, um, it's just been a blast. Like it has been so fun. It's been and fun. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I, I, you know, we, I, we don't, we don't ever get to our place alone. That's one thing that's, that's big is that we don't ever get to our place alone. We go no. And, and you know what? That's the one thing about our community. And I welcome women come in because look at what you and your crew do. I mean, you guys go hiking and you go bike riding and, and I'm not involved in some of that. Sometimes I'll show up, but these are like lifelong friends that you guys have developed just by being together in this community. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's fun. It's, it's, we have a lot of fun. Um, yeah. A lot of, so. Yeah. And if I find my tennis shoes, my running shoes in another, <laughs> in one more refrigerator, Bernie has hid my running shoes in a refrigerator. Gotta give you a hard time. Plyo box. They've gotten behind me and pushed my car. <laughs> I don't know, but it's been a crazy, crazy fun two or three years. So anyway, just my hats off to you. You are an amazing woman. Thank you. Now, as, as we leave, maybe one thing you want to tell somebody that's thinking about they need to change yeah absolutely um you know I would talk to you the way that I wanted to talk to myself back then is I would say do it um there are times in our life where we come across especially right now during January we have those new year's resolutions new year's resolutions don't work um just come out um the the vision that you have of wanting to be different, um, wanting to have a better outcome for your health is worth it. Um, I so love the place where I'm at today, mentally, mm -hmm. emotionally, physically, spiritually. Um, just being able to be here today has been one of the greatest journeys I've ever had. Um, so I would tell you, come join us, come have fun and, and just do it, just come out. Just give us a chance. That's all I ask. Yeah, that's good. So here's what we're doing to kick off the new year for everyone. We're doing a 90 minute vision casting class on nice. January 11th. So that's next Monday night at 7 p.m. And somewhere on this page will be a link. Go get registered over in our group and we will see you to help you put together your vision for 2021. Uh, creating the body and health that you want. So that is going to be a blast. Um, I have the template book for you. So no need to buy anything other than maybe if you have some colored pencils or stickers at your house uh, to be a little bit creative, but uh, no, no cutting, no, none of that. I have the template. It's going to be great. Vision casting 2021, create the body and health you want. So thank you, Bernie, for joining me and um, you. sharing your story. We love it. I'll see y'all later. Have a great day. Bye. Right. Bye.